video I will continue my exploration of impressionist painting techniques, in particular Claude Monet's painting style. I will be creating a replica of his painting Christmas Roses. Instead of oil paints like Monet, I will be using acrylics. The brand is Golden Open, which means that they dry slower than regular acrylics and that will make them more like oils. It will be easier for me to work with them and to blend them on my canvas. I'm starting by toning my canvas with medium yellow. This is actually a regular acrylic paint because I want it to dry quick so I can start painting. Yellow is the predominant color in the background of Monet's painting, so I thought it will be good to just get rid of all the white and start on that golden yellow surface. I should mention also that I'm painting on a canvas panel. It's a piece of canvas that's glued on cardboard background. This is by Artist Loft, very inexpensive surface. And while this is drying, let's prepare the paints. I'm going to squeeze them out onto my palette. You see the names of those colors on the screen. I will not attempt to pronounce them. Some of them came with the set of uh, golden open acrylics that I bought and some I bought separately to supplement that set. And of course I will need two blobs of white. I'm using titanium white and I'm putting one blob on the warm side of my palette and one blob on the cool side. That helps to prevent cross-contamination and desaturation of my colors. I will start by outlining my composition with just some white. I don't want to introduce pencil on the surface or charcoal. Charcoal often makes a mess. Using white will be easy to make corrections and I will just incorporate it into my painting. So just roughly sketching with my brush the outline of that whole, whole floral composition. first step in the actual painting process is to apply the darkest darks. I mention it in many of my videos, with opaque mediums we start painting from dark to light. I'm using a mixture of phthalo blue with my red to create the deep purple color. That's what I see in the reference and I am going to find it everywhere in the painting. There will be this deep shadow on the side and there will be some deeper shadows in the bouquet itself. Painting from reference that I found online is sometimes a little tricky. I left you the link to the reference that I found. It, I found it on WikiArt. It's hard to tell how accurate is this photo. I mean how accurate are the colors and also if it's cropped or not. I think it's a little strange that uh, Monet placed that composition smack in the middle of the canvas, but I see what I see. I'm going to move mine a little bit lower. And when I first saw it, I also thought it was a little strange that it's cropped like that, but maybe that's the way he painted it. I'm moving on to dark mid-tone areas in my painting. This will be the leaves. I decided not to mix the leaf color from blue and yellow but to use phthalo green that I'm modifying with my light yellow and also with addition of a little bit of white. I believe this painting is in a private collection so you can just go to a museum and take a look at it but all this is not especially important because our goal is to study his approach to a floral still life. Of course my goal is not to forge impressionist paintings and sell them at Sotheby's. My goal is to apply the principles of impressionism that I learned from Manet and from Renoir. That's another artist that I love from this period to my paintings and to my floral still lives that I will be working on. I really enjoyed working on this composition. I love white flowers and this replica taught me a lot about painting white flowers, how to make them colorful, how to find color in them, how to make them not just monotone white, but how to introduce color into subjects that don't really have color. But also there was another very important lesson that I learned when working on this. I'll reveal it in just a little bit. That way it will make more sense. Working on replicas of famous paintings is a really enjoyable thing to do. I do it to learn obviously but also to kind of take a break from the creative process because all the artistic decisions are made for me. Monsieur Monet already interpreted the subject for me and 
All I have left to do is just look at his painting and try to reproduce it on my canvas. My professors in college, when I went to the architectural school, often told us that it's very important to copy drawings and paintings from old masters. And the objection I always felt was that I can't paint like Leonardo da Vinci or like Titian. It's just too hard and too overwhelming. But when I learned a little more about art and I learned more about painting, I tried copying impressionists and it's really not as hard. Even though the paintings look beautiful and they look really complex, they're not hard to replicate. They painted Alla Prima, which is direct painting, wet on wet, and not with glazes like Renaissance masters and um, classical artists before them. Those um, oil glazes are very hard to do and very, very time consuming. But Impressionist art is very close to the way we paint today. And it's very, those paintings are quickly produced. They're very spontaneous, expressive. And I highly recommend if you're interested in this style to definitely try and make some copies of Impressionist art. I use gouache a lot to make replicas. On my channel you can find several replicas of Renoir's work there in the playlist that's called gouache painting. The link is in the description below and I even made a class Impressionism with gouache where I explain how to copy their works and how to learn from those copies and apply those principles to your own painting. I will also leave you the link in the description below. You can check out that class. There is a little bit of green in the background of the painting so I am using very thin brush strokes to distribute it there. My brush is almost dry. In general I use very little water in this painting to make it look more like oil. You know you usually don't, like I said, impressionists did not dilute the oils like master, like painters before them and applied very textured brush strokes. It's time to work on the flowers themselves. Lots of white with just a little bit of pigment. Trying to find the shadows, those cool blue shadows. My shade of blue is slightly different. I think Monet mixed his with something like ultramarine blue, maybe cobalt blue, but not with phthalo blue. But I want to keep my color palette harmonious. Since I started using some of that phthalo blue in the leaves, I'm going to stick with it to paint shadows on the flowers. The beauty of acrylic painting with opaque media painting is that if we mess something up, we can always go back and repaint it on top. Sometimes I hear that watercolor is the beginner medium. Often kids try to paint with watercolor, but I think it's one of the hardest mediums to use actually and opaque mediums like acrylics and gouache are way way easier and a good starting point if you're just learning painting and you need to learn the basic principles and if these mediums are very forgiving and um, much much easier to control than watercolor paint switching to pinks some of them will be very light also mixed with white and some of them will be more saturated so picking up a little more red with my brush. A good idea to use two brushes when painting with a opaque medium. You will see me use the second one in just a minute. One brush works for light colors and it's good to have a separate brush for dark colors or maybe even three brushes to avoid washing your brush constantly and introducing too much water into your paint. Acrylics tend to goop up on your brush so sometimes I feel like I need to unload the paint onto the palette or even wipe my brush on a paper towel. Always good idea to have a paper towel or an old rag somewhere handy to kind of unclog your brush because not all the paint gets onto the painting surface and it tends to accumulate on the brush and you lose control of your brush strokes. <music>
find those um, flower shapes adding darker areas around the flowers to give them better form I had them kind of roughly sketched in but I need now to verify all the edges and verify all the shapes and bring in darker colors where I need them inside that mass of flowers let's work on the background a little more Mane used what looks like pretty much the same colors that he used for the bouquet he used them on the background and just kind of scrubbed them with semi-dry brush so I'm going to try to imitate that so there are some warm yellows some greens a little bit of blue in there it's all mixed with white and applied with very quick kind of energetic brush strokes for some reason it never occurred to me to paint a background like that when I was just starting painting with the paint colors I would always try to paint something in the background some fabric or objects and when I started studying impressionist art closely I thought this is really the way to do it just kind of throw it all in there it creates visual harmony all the same colors that you used for your main subject use on the background and don't sweat it so to say don't try to smooth things out just scrub them on there real quick and it looks great it gives your painting movement and it doesn't distract from your main subject and it doesn't have to be perfect even the transition between the uh, that vase the bowl that the flowers are in to the shadow is very soft and kind of undefined and it makes sense because we can't really see it under all the flowers and Manet didn't tell us you can't really even tell where the vase ends and the shadow begins <music> I switch to a small brush I want to add a little more details to the flowers themselves and maybe to the to the vase there's a little reflected light there on the side let's find the centers of the flowers I'm going to the yellow I'm going to mark them because that will also kind of help me keep my place when I'm painting there is some warm yellow glow on those flowers I'm going to add a little more fresh paint and paint those passages with a small brush it's a small flat brush that I'm using the paint on my canvas is still wet so it's easy for me to blend my brush strokes with the ones that are already there so far I am not waiting for the paint to dry I'm working a la prima mixing in all my brush strokes and there are some darker areas in the centers where the stamen are I'm going to paint that as well the painting is starting to take shape more and more this was all I painted in one day I took a break from my painting that allowed me to forget about it a little bit and get a fresher look at it the next day when I came back to my studio the paint dried a little bit but it's still workable it became a little more sticky but it's still it didn't dry completely that's the beauty of golden open they stay fresh for probably a couple of days so I was able to continue working on my painting and while I was working I was preparing for several more hours of painting but here I made a very important discovery when I looked at my painting with a fresh eye I realized that all I need to do to finish it is to apply a few highlights with a small brush that's what I'm doing now I'm squinting when looking at Monet's painting and I'm trying to find the lightest areas in his painting that took me only a few minutes and I suddenly realized that my painting was finished so a very important lesson that I learned from this painting session it was not just about the colors or the brush strokes or the general approach it was also that it's very important not to overwork your painting 
and Manet was the master of that spontaneity, capturing that fleeting moment. And it was again a reminder for me to first of all take a break and evaluate your work a little bit later, not to try to force and finish your painting in just one session but also not to overwork and leave a little bit of room for viewers' imagination. So this was a short painting session to add the highlights, like I said, and also I restated some darks and verified some details with my small brush, as you see me doing right now. Manet's signature here on the bottom right because it's part of the painting and it adds to the overall effect. Let me know in comments if you think copying other artists work is beneficial or we should dedicate our time to developing our own style and not worry about what other artists are doing. As always I thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one here on Tamirov Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!